Yeah. I think we're live. We are live. This is a different feeling for you. Completely live. Completely live. Well, you know what? Being alive is a lot better than being dead. I'll tell you that right now. And, and uh, you know, I do feel, Ben, for all of the folks out there, you know, that have been affected by COVID-19. I mean, let's talk about that before we talk fishing for, for a second here, because uh, it has changed the way the world is and the way the world was. Um, you know, and I, I don't think there's anybody that hasn't been affected some way, shape or form uh, with this. And, uh, you know, for all of the frontline workers and first responders and, and folks that really have been working hard throughout all of the, um, you know, isolation and social distancing periods that we've had during this the last several months, uh, my hat's off to them. Nice, uh, sunburnt solar panel there <laughs> i've been on the water a lot this week or at least for a few days so it's uh you know hats off to those folks it's uh, much appreciated and i know that there's been a lot of people that have put their lives at risk you know um, uh, hospitals uh, um, and um, at nursing homes and uh, a lot of different places so yeah it's uh it's different and and now that it's warm it, it's feeling more like a normal world but i know it isn't yet so we still got to get through this pandemic and uh and one good thing about it is if you get out on the water away from the crowds there's a pretty good chance you might stay away from covid 19 and that's uh that's a good thing and what i've been hearing all the the statistics are that canadians because the border's still closed Canadians are going to get outdoors more. It's already shown, um, you know, people want to get outside. They want to go hiking, biking. I just heard Ontario sales licenses are up right now. And, uh, oh, you lost me. I see the, yeah, we lost your camera. We still got your voice. We lost your camera. Well, okay. Well, then we're going to get my IT guy in here. My son, Darren Azumi. Hey, Darren, we need you if you can hear me. <laughs> uh oh, he he he's not picking up. I will text him real quick here, okay? And uh, and while we get this technical thing up, I it's funny. Uh, your camera and source will appear here. That's weird. It's not. Uh, it's not picking up. I'll just text Darren and see here. See, that's what going live is. You know, you're live. You can't edit <laughs> that stuff out, right? Yep. She's uh, right. I saw I saw a post the other day, and it was so true. And it said, uh, "Fishing, the original social distancing." And it's it's <laughs> it's great. You can get out. You can you can get a little distance between your your problems in the world, and you know, at least still get out and do the stuff that we love, and still you know respect social distancing and keep a little sanity. So. Oh, there you are. My IT guy is here. He's back. Show him stream. Okay. Oh. And boom. All right. We're back. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. I appreciate it. See, when you're my age, you know, uh, social media means, you know, getting together with your friends and family and all that stuff. And uh, this is a new way for me, uh, this whole social media game. And all of the companies I work with for many, many years want me to do more of this so this is you know i've been um, i've been working slowly into it with a few companies uh, uh during the pandemic and uh and it's fun to do because you know what here i am at home don't even have to drive anywhere and for a guy you know like myself that is of scottish descent i didn't have to burn any fuel to see you tonight ben <laughs> well we we really appreciate you taking the time to, to chime in and Give us your insights on everything and we know we've got bass opening up here in the next couple of weeks so we're all pretty excited for that and and we put it out there we said the legend of fishing bob azumi he's going to give us the secret so uh where do you want to kick off well you know the, the the first i will say how i heard about you guys was surfing the net about probably six weeks ago i found a deal on uh berkeley power bait uh the um uh, bunker hogs. You had yep. them on sale for like four ninety nine a pack. I was like, 
where is this place? This is pretty cool. I'm going to buy a dozen bags of those. Even though I'm sponsored by Berkeley, I always like to keep my stock up. And, you know, for a dozen bags, basically, I'm not going to bug them for, for, for that. I just go buy them. And when I saw them at $4.99, I'm going, that's a heck of a deal. And and then I see the .ca, and I go, that's a Canadian company. I like that. And then I researched a bit and found out more about you folks. And then I started going through the website and seeing all the uh, incredible selection that you had and said, that's pretty cool. You know, that's that's neat to see a Canadian company that's uh, up and running online, especially uh, during the, the times that we're at home a lot, which was the last three months or two and a half months. And uh so that's how I found out about you folks, and uh, that was exciting. And then here we are, now I'm live talking to you. So how, let me ask you a question. How long has the website been up? So we've been up probably a year now. Um, we, we had dabbled in some other stuff, and, and we really saw the need. We kept buying orders from the U.S., and not to name any companies, but you get you know all the surprise duty bills and brokerage bills and, and freight bills and you know, you, you buy a deal in the U.S. and you go, oh, great, you know, that's 100 bucks. And by the time you get it, it's 200 bucks. It's not a deal. And we thought, you know what, there's surely we can do a good job where we can have a great selection in Canadian dollars and ship it just as fast as some of those other big guys who are super fast at shipping. And, and that was our goal. And we were we were working, we were building towards it. And then all of a sudden, you know, unfortunately, this hit, but uh, it thrust us into it and, and we've morphed and gone along with it and we have a ton of great feedback and a, a, a really it loyal has, following. Has this been good during the pandemic? It has. It has. Yeah, good, it has good, been, good for you guys. I think you know, everybody wants to go fishing and, and do their thing. So we've been there to get them what they need and all their great Berkeley products and everything else we sell. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, the, uh, the thing is I'm a tackle junkie. So to come on uh, tonight on the Facebook Live for you guys is pretty neat because first off, I buy a lot of fishing tackle. Yes, I am sponsored by a few companies, but I still buy a lot, way too much every year. But you can't buy too much tackle, let's face it. It's, uh, it's fun to always see what's new and if it's a better mouse trap, whether it's colors, design, size, action, whatever it is. I'm in because I'm a tournament angler. That's what the only reason I do what I do, just so you know, Ben, is the TV show and the media stuff I've been involved in for for 41 years now is to support my tournament addiction. I am going to fish tournaments, so I physically cannot stand or move anymore or die. So that is the whole goal. It was when I started when I was, you know, 20, 21 years old. And now that I'm uh, more than 60, at 62, I'm still fishing tournaments and I love them. I mean, it's it's not as easy getting up at four or five in the morning and that than uh, and fishing, uh, you know, long days on the water. Uh, uh, practicing pre-fishing before the events and then fishing them. But but I will tell you, I love it. Now, having said that, this week, we uh, were down, I was with my buddy Derek Strube, and Derek and I, you know, we're like this on the tournaments, usually fishing against each other, but we do fish the Sturgeon Bay Open in Wisconsin every year for about 10 years. And then down in your neck of the woods, we did team up and won the Quinney Series Classic uh, two years in a row together as a team. Uh, we went fun fishing this week. So Monday morning, we I left the house here at about 6.30 in the morning. We got down to Lake St. Clair, uh, tagged up with Derek, and we fished till dark that night. Had a fish fry, cooked up some walleyes and bluegills. Went out the next morning, fished till dark, and then I think I got home around just around 12.30 uh, Tuesday night. We caught over 200 fish down there, um, everything that swims. We caught uh, northern pike, white bass, sheep's head, um, channel cat, uh, largemouth, smallmouth, which are still out of season, but they're you know they were biting in all the areas. The other fish were, uh, did I say white bass? Um, we caught bluegill, pumpkin seeds, uh, walleyes, uh, saw a giant sturgeon, saw a couple of muskies. The target species was muskie, though. We went down there to shoot a muskie swim bait segment. And we we had a few fish. We had a follow. We saw another one, saw that big sturgeon. But they just were scattered, just didn't see a lot of them. Everywhere we thought muskies would be, there were a ton of bass, which you'd think they'd be around the bass. The areas where the bluegill were, we thought there'd be a few muskies around. No, so we switched up tactics. And uh, I actually, let me grab this rod. This is just a Berkeley Essential jig head here. And as you can see, it's very, very tiny. 
uh, you know, that's uh, right at, I'd say that's a 16th ounce and put that under a float about three feet under a float with a little gulp um, fry, a tiny, like the one inch, uh, the one inch uh, fry. And uh, that thing just, we caught so many uh, bluegill. We caught, uh, out of the 200 fish, we probably 125 or 135 of them were, were bluegills. Really big ones too, good eating ones. And then, uh, um, let's see, we caught, oh, the, the walleye fishing off the charts. We, we So we did the traditional stuff, right? Yep. Crawler harnesses with bottom bouncers, use the Berkeley crawler harnesses with live night crawlers. Trolled around for like maybe an hour and caught one channel catfish. And and so Strube, he's always, you know, hyper in that. He picks up one of my rods. Actually, this is the rod he grabbed. It was uh, uh, an Ike reel and it's on a, you know, Berkeley world-class, or I mean a Fenwick world-class spinning rod. Very nice setup, by the way. Um, and this bait here is a uh, Johnson Thin Fisher, half ounce gold. Uh, we also had silver. Uh, silver was working. My son used silver, Darren. And uh, we started a whale in the sheep head on these in about 12 feet of water by just casting them out where we were trolling for walleyes. But the first fish Stroob catches um, is sheep head. Second fish he catches is a walleye, about three and a half pounds. So all of a sudden, and he's casting ahead of the boat while we're trolling at about 1.1 mile an hour for walleyes. And so all of a sudden, trolling rods go away. We grab three rods, Darren, Stroob, and I, and we start using these, these baits uh, by doing long casts out 12 feet of water, letting them sink down to the bottom, and then just ripping them up a foot or two, and then letting them sink down, foot or two down, and up and back and forth. And and we just wailed on the sheep head. And some of them were like eight, nine pounders. And it was a lot of fun. And, and we caught a bunch of sheep head. But we couldn't get any more walleyes on that. So so then we went in a little bit shallower, looking for weeds in about six feet of water. Found some cabbage weed. Not a boat within, I'd say, three miles of us. Maybe four miles. Didn't see a boat where we went. Found some cabbage weed in about six feet of water. And... Uh, um, this is one of the baits we use. That is a, a Berkeley swim jag head. And this is the uh, power bait champ uh, swimmer here. So yeah. this is the, uh, it's cut down. Uh, I used a little bit of super glue there, but it's starting to rip off now. It looked a lot prettier after, uh, before it caught a bunch of fish. And I went through about, uh, I think a half a pack of these uh, bait fish colored uh, um uh, champ uh, champ swimmers and you see here i've got a treble hook on there i've got one of the fusion 19 treble hooks they're so sharp even though this is very sharp the main hook put a little keeper on here and this treble hook caught at least half of the fish that i that i hooked and brought in so we got onto this flat where the cabbage weed was and working these about midway through the water column, about three to four feet down and six feet of water, uh, this was catching some good ones. Uh, caught a number of walleyes on this. But then Stroob uh, um, started using another version of what we had on. And it it's, uh, let's see, I've got so many rods here. Here's, here's one that caught a lot of fish and this is a this is one of the underspins this would be a good one for down at Bay Aquini fish in the weeds so you've got the Berkeley underspin jig head so it's got the spinner on the bottom you got the champ minnow we cut the nose off because after it wore down a bit and you caught a few fish we just take off the uh the front of it the uh the head of it a bit and then reuse it again uh, you know must be the scottish in me but uh, we'd reuse the bait and these underspins were working too he caught the biggest walleye on one of these bigger profile you know a heavier head he was working a little, a little more aggressive 
water temperature was really warm down there. And I can't wait to get down to Bay Quinney to use some of these underspins by casting them on the weed edges and on the weed flats for walleyes. I know they're going to work down there because you got the best of both worlds as the water's warming up. You've got the flash of the little underspin and you've got the wiggle waggle of the uh, of the swim bait here. So those were those were some pretty key baits down there, um, and uh, they're pretty new on the market uh, from Berkeley. So I, I was pretty pretty impressed. I uh, now I got to order more of them, you know. And when I put in my order, um, have you got any of those in stock, by the way, Ben? You betcha. Yeah, good, good, good. Well, I might have to uh, put some in because uh, I'm going to need more. We uh, we went through a few uh, champ swimmers yesterday. I think we went through about two or three packs in total. Um, but we caught so many, like in, in this area, there were largemouth, smallmouth, pike, and good walleyes, um, and even gar pike swimming around in this cabbage weed. And it was probably, that area was probably uh, four acres, maybe three acres in size. Yeah. And it was a spot that Strub or nor Strub or I had ever fished before. We just found it by idling around after we did the trolling and the... Uh, the uh, thin fish are fishing in that. And then we went back to the pan fish at night and just stroked those. And it was a good trip. Yeah, it was, it was awesome, you know, getting out in the hot sun and uh, beating down in the heat. And I like heat, so I don't never complain. I complain all winter when it's cold, so I can't complain when it's too hot. So, yep. Well, hey, uh, we had a question come in from Darren S. Uh, he asked, Hey, Bob, could you speak about the advantages of using braided line compared to monofilament when fishing for walleye? So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that new Berkeley X9 or. Yeah, I don't have a spool of it here. Uh, do you have any there? Yeah, okay. So, you know, the funny thing is, is, uh, is when braid first came out, I was reluctant a little bit. And, you know, you got to realize I've been in this business uh, for a long time. So when it first came out years ago, these super lines, like the uh, the X5 and the X9, I was like, I don't know. I use mono. It works well for me. It's a great all-around line. Why would I ever change? And, and you know, I I mean, I started my career uh, with, you know, Berkeley Trilene. That was my line of choice, um, you know, around 1980 when I started full-time. So I was used to the rods, like, you know, the rod actions that I would use. Like, you take this Ferocity, for instance. I would use rods that I could get a good hook set um, with monofilament line. You got to realize that monofilament stretches a lot. So you have to use a rod that's a little stiffer to get a hook set with monofilament line for most cases, whether you're using, you know, a jig head or if you're using like a three odd or a four odd hook that's, you know, thinner or a thicker diameter hook, you need to drill it in there. So a stiffer rod's better. With braided line, you can get away with a lighter action rod, maybe a medium or a medium heavy rod rather than a medium heavy or a heavy rod for mono. So when I started using braid, I couldn't believe the difference in the advantages. First off, braided fishing line has zero stretch in it. So if you take monofilament and take your buddy and have him wrap a bunch of line around his hand, and he walks back, say, 40 feet away from you, and you uh, tighten up with your spinning rod, your bait cast rod, and let's say you're using eight or 10 pound test line, and you set the hook, I bet you you wouldn't even move that person's hand if they're holding it like this because of the stretch and elasticity in that length of line, say 40 or 50 feet away. You do that with braid, and you're gonna jerk that guy's hand off hand or you might cut the cut his hand with the line because there's just no stretch in it so there is definitely an advantage for hook setting there's an advantage also for sensitivity you know braided or you know the super lines like fire line or nano fill or um, you know the new x5 and x9 definitely don't stretch so they're going to be more sensitive and you can feel everything down there now in clear water situations so if i'm down say uh on uh, Lake Ontario or Lake Simcoe or Lake Erie and it's crystal clear. If I'm using any of the braided type fishing line, I'm going with a trilene fluorocarbon leader on here. Uh, maybe it might be about a three to four feet leader uh, that I'm using. And that way it's invisible near the bait. 
And even if this is visible, it's, you know, it's not near the, the bait at all, the braid. And uh, I'm going to get a better hook set. I'm going to feel what's going on more so down there. And another advantage is jigging weeds or fishing weeds with a crankbait with braid. Um, you know, when I think of Bay of Quinney fishing, I think of, of using braid where you can actually snap your rod and cut the weeds with it. Pretty yeah. hard to do with mono. You got to do it pretty hard, but uh, uh, interestingly, X5, um, it's really more abrasion resistant. So the Berkeley X5 is more abrasion resistant. Um, and uh, now when you go with the X9, it's a smoother line, uh, cast further, and it's kind of the million dollar question. Some guys like the X5 more for spinning. Some guys like the X9 more for spinning uh, rods and reels. Um, and that's debatable. Uh, but personally, um, I like the X5 more for my bait cast reels uh, because more, you know, abrasion resistant. So if I'm using, um, you know, using it for flipping or pitching in heavy cover for bass, it's it's just more abrasion resistance when you're seesawing it up and down on weeds or around wood or lily pads or boat dock poles or whatever it is. Um, then on the X9, I like the fact that it's smoother and I can get a longer cast. Um, you know, and and when you're when you're talking about a, a spinning outfit, you know, the smoother the line, the better it's going to come off this fixed spool because the line just peels off of here. Whereas a bait cast outfit and, you know, has a revolving spool and uh, with the revolving spool that's turning as the line's coming off on a cast versus the spinning that's a fixed spool. Little trick though. Now we, you know, I know you're in the tackle business, Ben, and we don't want to take away from, you know, all your line sales, but um, I never fill a reel completely up. Uh, with braided line. I always put a little bit of backing of less expensive uh, monofilament line on the reel first. So I might feel, fill the reel up maybe a third to half full with less expensive monofilament. And then I'll put on my braid or super line, you know. But sometimes that knot where you join and this was happening on one of my reels yesterday, and I gave Stroob a bandage. Uh, literally, he said, do you have any tape in the boat? And I said, no, I don't have any tape. Uh, but he said, yeah, I'm casting so far with the thin fisher that what's happening is I'm hitting the tag end, even though I still, you know, there's still about 20 yards, 30 yards of line on on the longest cast. The knot was showing where, where it was joined. So... What you do is you take a bandage or a little piece of electrical tape and you tape over that knot. So you peel all the line off to where that knot is, where you've joined uh, your backing to your main line, put a little piece of tape over it and then wind it, wind it over. And uh, that way you'll never you know, get any catching as it's coming off of this fixed spool. Now another trick, I know I'm getting a little carried away on all these, these things, but this dawned on me this morning. I'm having coffee. I was thinking about it, and it was something that I, I did it on video, one of my TV shows, probably 15, 20 years ago, and I, I forgot about it. But when I was thinking about the tape, was this on bait casters. Do you have any customers that have said they're having trouble uh, with bait casters because they backlash bad? Yep, all okay. the time. And I've heard it. In Canada, where I've lived all my life, oh, Bob, I bought my first bait caster, and it's so hard to use. These are easy to use. They are so easy to use. But one thing is, it's your thumb. You need to use your thumb. You don't just freewheel it without your thumb. You need to use that to feather the spool as you cast. But a little trick, if you're having problems, is... Go out in the backyard and peel this lure, like take the hooks off and just use like a jig head or a crankbait without hooks and uh, use at least a half ounce to practice, just at least a half ounce to practice till you get good at it. Then you can go to, you know, three, uh, three eighths ounce or, or, uh, you know, something in that below half ounce, but don't use a light lure to start. Peel off what your longest cast would be. Okay, in the in the in the yard, then take some electrical tape 
and tape your spool at least a couple times around the spool so that no more line can come off. Just a couple times around the spool. And then you won't backlash much, I guarantee you, because they can't, because it's not going to go beyond how far your farthest cast is. And that's a great way to learn how to use them so that you don't, you know, get a complete bird's nest here and have to put on, you know, another uh, spool of brand new line. So that's one thing I, I used to talk about that 20, 30 years ago in my seminars, but I uh, kind of forgot about it till uh, Scrooge was taping up that knot uh, earlier this week and it reminded me of that tip. But there's, um, you know, it, and the funny thing is I use bait casting, like the Revo reels. I've got, you know, some of the, the new long distance uh, uh, Revos and the Beast and, and the Premiers. And I've got a bunch of them all around me here in, in the living room. But they um, they would they would probably be 50, at least 50 percent of my fishing be spinning and would be bait casting it's just the way it is i mean i uh, i i think bait casters handle heavier line um a lot better than a spinning so you know this thing here's got 65 pound uh, uh this particular one's got 65 pound spider wire on it and uh you know that's heavy line that's a big reel it's got the big power handle um the beast and uh it's just a heavy duty outfit man well, hey, uh, Bob, you mentioned something, and, and we were talking about doing something special at 7.30. I think you know what to do. If you want to take it away, I'll look to see who gets the answer first. I'll write their name down, and then you can tell them what they're going to win, and you can ask them the secret question. Yeah, the secret question. Is that uh, – what spinning reel are you holding there? Is that uh, – Well, this just happens to be a brand-new uh, Abu Garcia Premier. Oh, so, so Revo – very nice very nice um we're gonna give that away we're gonna give that away it's about a 300 hundred dollar touch to whoever can get this question right so darren darren do you know the answer to this question <laughs> okay so um let's see now what question uh okay um here here we'll try to make this one easy okay okay if i had one Berkeley, I'll, I'll do this. Pretty, this is gonna be pretty good. So, is it the first person that answers this gets it? Yep, first person in the chat box uh, along the side there or uh, below. First okay. one to, uh, to ram it off, they win. Okay, if 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 I had one Berkeley soft bait to use in clear water, shallower water for smallmouth bass, what would it be? I'll give you know after somebody gets that answer, I'll I'll tell them a number of reasons why because there's a few ways to use it too. Okay, so uh, I see uh, one guess was the fry, and and we had a whole conversation about that gulp fry, didn't we? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's definitely in my top three, but <laughs> that, that might be worth that might be worth a pack of lures. <laughs> but, oh, I, you there know, it is. I, they what, got what it. You got? Nathan Trombley, I think he's got it. Do you want to disclose what the uh, right answer was? Yeah, well, what is it? Is it start with a G? It does. And with an L? It does. And you have a special on them on the website right now? <laughs> so we, we have, we do. We have a buy two, uh, get one free on the normal Powerbait General, but not the Max Scent. That's the secret stuff. So we... Uh, we're, we're trying to, we're doing an awesome promo on that. that okay. Five, so five. I, I didn't say max set and I didn't say power bait. I just was thinking general to make it easier, but you know, let's face it. Gary Yamamoto Senko is a wonderful lure. I'm sure you sell them or, or, or do you, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a great bait. He's a friend of mine, Gary and, um, um, you know, we've fished in Spain together and Texas that, but I will say this and I hope Gary's not watching. He's going to kill me. I haven't talked to him for a while. So I think, I think that, uh, the Berkeley power bait general or the max scent general will outfish a Senko. That bait is incredible since they've come out. In fact, I was lucky enough to get some, uh, some of the baits before they were introduced on the market. 
and I got them uh, before they were even shown uh, to the dealers and things to, to give them a whirl. It is the most incredible stick bait, I think, that's ever been invented. It's got all of the attributes that Gary's baits have, which is on a wacky rig, for instance, which is one of many ways to fish it. It's got that, that wiggle on each end instead of just sort of falling down it, it like a lot of stick baits don't do anything in the water some of the companies make them out of regular plastisol they don't do anything they just sort of fall down whereas this one's got that sort of wavering on both ends you know like this as a fault but the fact that it's got either power bait or max sand in it fish do not spit the things out so they're as close to fishing live bait as as live bait fishing gets, you know, I mean, fish eat those things. And so it gives you a long time to set the hook. So when you throw those things out, Texas rigged uh, in weeds, flipping them uh, weightless on a wacky hook hooked in the center of the, uh, of the uh, general. Um, now I got a bag of them here, but I'm not going to open them because they do smell. I don't know what Berkeley puts in them. I toured their plant. And they won't let you in the area where they uh, where they make these because they put some secret formula in them that makes them smell and and whatever it is, fish want to eat them. They want to bite them and then swallow them or or just stay in their mouth. So uh, that is it. And I, you can even make a Ned rig out of one, and uh, you can cut it. You know, after you uh, you break it on a bass or whatever, or a couple of fish, then use half of it on a on like a, um, a half moon a Berkeley jig head and, and use it like a Ned rig and use maybe two inches of it and just fish it. To, uh, we kind of nicknamed those baits the nubbin, you know, uh, when we're, <laughs> you know, so. I was trying that last year. I was taking them, splitting them in half and just putting them on my drop shot. So just using it yeah. as a little three inch. Kind of yeah, sick. you can drop shot the whole bait too if you get if you get the smaller ones, you know, and yeah. and uh, the Max Ed General comes in various sizes um and uh, and so does the uh the regular power bait as well i think power bait's a quarter inch longer in all their sizes so you kind of get the best of both worlds and uh there you go man those things are incredible and and you know the max end, it's kind of like a a morphed gulp power bait sort of thing and and i don't know it's just amazing and you know Somebody had mentioned gulp fry. I, I probably, it would have been a toss up, but I did was thinking general. But we talked earlier, Ben, about that gulp fry. That thing's won a lot of money for me back when I was winning tournaments. It, uh, I won the uh, Everstart tournament over in Thousand Islands and won a Ranger boat on it. And uh, and uh, we won a couple tournaments in Trenton, I think one in Belleville. I think we won like five tournaments on the Gulp Fry. It's it's been a pretty good lure for me. I I know my son Darren and I won a couple team tournaments on it. My uh, brother Wayne and I won a team tournament on. I won that ever start. So that three inch Gulp Fry. I I said if they ever discontinue that, I am boycotting Berkeley. If they ever discontinue that three inch Fry in green pumpkin color, it's the it's the simplest three inch little stick bait you'll ever see on a drop shot rig and i don't catch a fish i mean i was at big rito lake filming last fall and uh um i was on this one hump that notoriously has you know some smallmouth and some giant uh bluegill and pumpkin seed on it and i was catching some smallmouth on it, and then all of a sudden i was getting uh, a few of these giant you know pumpkin seeds and bluegill so what i did is i just cut it uh, in thirds, and I started whaling on these big uh, bluegill and pumpkin seed that I was marking on the graph in, in like 28, 30 feet of water. And uh, the thing just catches everything. It's just so edible. But like I said, it smells and it's something I wouldn't put in my mouth, but uh, the fish is <laughs> like it. I don't know. Maybe they put dog food or something in it. I don't know what they do. It's weird. Like you've smelled power bait, right? And gold. I'll never forget when I first opened up the store unboxing the first boxes of power bait and thinking am i really going to work in this for the rest of my life like it <laughs> it stunk and the bags weren't even they weren't even cracked open they were it was just it's that stinky and yeah, yeah. Uh, and that well, with, with all this social distancing i did shower for this uh, facebook live tonight ben and i also 
I also put on a little bit of cologne because I've really been saving it for a few months. I just haven't used any. <laughs> Plus, I was I was cleaning fish today. I was I, I've been so busy since I got back from uh, uh, you know Lake Saint Clair. I ended up uh, I was uh, whoops just dropped a pen here. I was cleaning fish, uh, walleyes, and bluegill. I kept twenty nine bluegill and four walleyes to eat because I have not eaten. The last fish I had was a grouper sandwich in uh, February in Florida, just before all the crazy COVID nineteen hit, and so I hadn't I didn't have any fish in the freezer, and and uh, it was pretty uh, it was pretty uh, sad. I mean I, I I like eating you know beef and pork and all and chicken and all that stuff. Boy, I I miss my fish. So we did eat a few bluegills. Uh, uh last night and then I, I cleaned the rest of the fish today but that's another thing too about just cleaning fish and i know it's a little off topic but uh um if you're gonna keep fish i'm a big fan of keeping the meat firm and lots of ice and because i grew up in erie o down on lake erie and so they had the the fisheries down there and so you know i was used to seeing crushed ice and all the fish in the big tubs you know when they come off the uh off the, the fish tugs out there. So when you go into the fisheries, um, they'd have them all iced down, crushed ice, and, you know, they'd be iced down. Sometimes they're out there for several days on the big water, so when they came in, you know, the fish got to be fresh. So um, I, if I'm going to keep some fish to eat, which is not very often, not as often as I'd like, I like to ice them down really good, um, even if I'm not going to clean them, like if I'm going to clean them a day or two later, or if I'm going to clean them even when I get home, like a three hour drive, I'll ice them down really good. And then another little trick I do is if I've got a fair amount to do, like I did today to finish off the bluegill and those four walleyes is I'll take a big bowl of water and put some ice in it. And so as I'm cleaning them, I'll throw the fillets after I, you know, uh, take the bones out and skin them and stuff is I'll throw them in the ice water and so if i'm you know fiddling around or the phone rings and i get uh distracted or something the fillets are always really firm you know yeah. it was hot out there today when i was cleaning them so um you know late morning after i did a conference call and so yeah it was uh i was i'm so glad though uh you know because I, I cleaned a few before the conference call and then i had a a uh, bit of a video chat with uh, one of the companies I work with. And it's a good thing I was on a video chat because I smelled like fish today. <laughs> but I'm so, clean you guys. So Andrew Snowden, he popped up a question and I got it there. It says, and, and I'm kind of with him, best time of year to drag tubes for smallmouth bass. And then I got to ask the question, what is the best color? Let's talk Lake Ontario. Let's talk uh, clear water. Well, the best color is probably the most drab color green pumpkin i mean and there's a lot of different variations of green pumpkin that are more goby colored or uh, uh some have a little bit more a brighter flack in them um but i also like smoke smoke with the uh, silver flake um uh, the berkeley power tubes um you know they're they're awesome um i i probably you know whether it's dragging a tube in deep water um or or uh, you know sight fishing with a tube where you know you're fishing visible fish and you're throwing a light eighth ounce tube at them um you know tube fishing can go from right the start of bass season right through till when you know the season ends in the late fall i mean bat, smallmouth will eat a tube anytime um for the most part but the irony is now that drop shotting is so popular um you know a lot of guys are getting away from fishing tubes and fishing more drop shot baits and uh and that that's funny because i was going through some baits just before we went live and uh i found this this water bug and uh that's a an incredible drop shot bait i started using these when they came out about a year ago and uh, here i'll take one out um it's a uh pretty subtle little lure this water bug and uh that thing there is just uh it's a fish catching machine on a drop shot i don't know it's, i don't know what it's got two little appendages on the uh, side of it uh right here and then you've got uh, a little split tail on it but uh smallmouth really like that and and uh i still like my gulp fry for drop shot but this one here i i like as well and and that but you know the the thing about tubes, getting back to it, is I 
I'd say 90% of the tubes I pick would be, would be, uh, you know, variations of green pumpkin, either green pumpkin plain or with, uh, you know, some black fleck or different color fleck to make it go be like, and then, and then smoke uh, variations. That's pretty much it. And, and anytime, anytime small most seasons on really, I mean, it's, uh, there are times when you don't have to go that subtle and, yep. you know, the, the, um, range of how far they'll chase is more, you know, and, 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 you know, you might, you know, get them on, uh, and I don't have a Berkeley spy. I've got one over on the other side of the room there, but, oh, you got one. Oh, perfect. What's coming next? That was my next question. <laughs> yeah. I'm a psychic. A psych- I, I, I was going to say a psychic, but people that know me would say more a psycho. Um, <laughs> Berkeley spy. Now, that bait is different. Okay, so the original one was the dual uh, Realis um, spy bait that came out. And then uh, the folks at Berkeley came out with that one um, last year. I've used both, and I will say that that one um, in the slow sinking and fast sinking version are incredible because they're a little bit smaller, yet, um, you know, if you want to power fish, you can go with the fast sinking one. And, you know, I use on those baits a lot of nanofill on my spinning reel. I'll use nanofill in a white color, and I'll go with 8 or 10-pound test nanofill with an 8 or 10-pound fluorocarbon leader, maybe 3 feet long, 4 feet long, and a medium to medium light rod. And with that really ultra-thin diameter uh, nanofill, you can make a cast and cast that that bait, whether it's the, the slower, fast, sinky one. You can cast that sucker so far. And that's the key with the spy, the Berkeley spy, is you want to cast the thing out as far as you can away from the boat or shore and let it slowly sink, sink, sink down. And then as it gets about halfway down the water column, halfway to two-thirds down the water column, you want to reel it just like this at a steady cadence. You don't twitch it. You don't do anything except slow reel. Now, unlike um, unlike the original spy bait that came out, this one is unique um, in the fact that when you stop it, it wobbles almost like a stick bait. And uh, as it wobbles down, um, you get a lot of strikes too. So you can stop that spy on a steady retrieve and those little spinners are turning on either end and it wobbles down, which is a pretty unique trait to that bait. Very cool. It's like a, it's like Berkeley general is if you stop it or kill it. So uh, that's a, that's a pretty cool bait. Um, and uh, in clear water fishing, it's not a murky water bait. It's a clear water bait. And uh, have you got lots of those in inventory? I have a ton of them. And you know what? They started off the season. Uh, there it is out of the package, a little bit closer. Such a we, neat bait. We started off the season. It was so hard to get all the colors, but we finally got them all in. And they're still, you know, if there's a new bait from, from these guys that we're really excited about this year, that one. And everybody's ready to go crush the smallmouth on it. So They did their homework on making that bait because what they did is they, they, they took an existing lure that was out there that was selling very well and put some attributes in it with the uh, Fusion 19 hooks that are like sticky sharp. Uh, the fact that they've got a, a, a slow sinky, fast sinking. And 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 the, the, the real advantage to that bait is it's got the slow wiggle to it as you're bringing it in. But then when you stop it, it's got that same wiggle as it falls down. And I've had a lot of big bass. You'll see them with your polarized glasses following you know like 30 40 feet from the boat and you see it right right you know on it like this following and all of a sudden you stop it and that bait wiggles down and they just go down and eat it it's it's pretty cool and and it's a good bait that anybody can use it because it's just cast out steddy slow retrieve i actually use reel that you may not even have in inventory i don't have one really close to me it's a berkeley winch spinning reel that is my favorite spy reel. You know why? It's a slow retrieve. Yeah. Most spinning reels have a faster retrieve. So when you turn it like this, you're bringing in a lot of line. 
the winch is made for crankbaits, but what I like about the winch spinning reel is, um, is it's got a very slow retrieve so that when I'm reeling it like this, I'm actually reeling it slow, even though it might look like I'm reeling it fast, but it's not bringing in a lot of line on the spool. And I've got, uh, my son and I, we each got about three or four of those winch reels because uh, we like them for slower presentations like that. Yeah. They, you just don't want to get in a hurry. And, you know, that's the weird thing about about uh, fishing is I finally got out for a round of golf uh, uh, last week, and I like to golf uh, a little bit. I, I think I golfed like one round last year and two rounds the year before, but I do like golf, and I, if I had a chance, I'd golf more, but it cuts into my fishing time. So you don't go golfing with one club, and it's hard to go bass fishing just with one uh, rod and reel. And, you know, sometimes we'll go to fast retrieve reels. Like if I'm using a, a general, say, around boat docks, skipping a general way up under the boat docks, I like like a Revo rocket that's a super fast retrieve. So it's bringing in almost double the line of a, a Revo winch spinning reel just because you can get that line in so quick um, and make another cast up under a tree or a dock or wherever there's shade where there's a big ba largemouth hiding so um yeah it's kind of it you know that's the, the cool thing about it is is um it's neat to pick up various rod actions and various real retrieves with different types of line just so you can do all of these different techniques that's what that's one thing i love about bass fishing and i know tonight's talk was you know more geared towards the bass heads and stuff but I, I really do like the uh, the fact that you know you I've got rods over to, to my left rods to my right and it's uh, it's just um, as I know oh, there it is there's the old rocket I'm such a tackle junkie I love I love being surrounded near fishing equipment it does drive my wife crazy though <laughs> we got a big house here and there's a lot of fishing equipment in every room pretty well but I am in the bass room by the way. We this see the room, picture. This room is all bass. Uh, that's the original Corey Trepanier. There's a large mouth there, a large mouth there, a small mouth there, a large mouth, small mouth, large mouth. There's a deep large. So it's all different paintings in here of just bass. And there's some sculptures and wood carvings of bass in here. But this is the bass room. The room over next to me where we watch TV, that's the um, that room is the walleye room. Then there's uh, trout and salmon is more towards the dining rooms, uh, uh, both in the kitchen and the formal dining room. And then the library over there, that's uh, that's uh, a mixture of uh, uh, the Canadian Open trophy and it's got the humidor and stuff over there for cigars. So, yeah, we're, we're every room has a, a, a theme here, you know. It's a, it's a fish house. <laughs> kind of like a commercial fish house, sort of. So some smart, good looking fellow made a post. He said, tell them about the perfect rod for using it. Uh, and that, that fellow was Darren Azumi. He's typing along here. So maybe that was a nudge, dad. To tell them about which now? Said, tell them about the perfect rod for using it when you were talking about the rocket and oh, or maybe it was the spy bait, but is he sitting there close to you? Yeah, I don't know. He's not, he's not within sight of me. I, oh, I disappeared. You know what? I don't know. We're moving on. But yeah, I, uh, um, you know what, D Darren, you know, Darren's running joke is he's my cameraman and my son, right? As he said for, you know, for 38 years, we've been looking for a good host. That's his running joke. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. He's asking me about the spy bait. Um, do you have a white Veritas rod there by chance? You betcha. Okay. So Darren has a good point the veritas rod comes in a lot of action very economical rod for what it is it's a wonderful rod uh what do you retail those for ballpark you can get them from 110 bucks to 139 depending which series you go with yeah so it's so it's in that just over 100 range so we're using a seven foot medium medium light action winch veritas rod for that berkeley spy darren i didn't want to give all the secrets away uh tonight but uh that rod with the winch reel that spinning rod the winch uh, veritas uh spinning rod i believe it's seven feet long it's got a very soft tip on it yep. and it also is a good rod to use 
little inline spinners, like a little maps, for instance, as well, because, you know, they got treble hooks on them and you, you don't want to, you don't need a lot of hook setting power with like a, a small treble hook, like you get on the, the spy uh, uh, baits or even on a, a small inline spinner. That rod has got a very soft tip. So it allows the fish to suck it in. And when you do feel that tick or that hit, because a lot of times the spy bait, they just load up on, it. you know, like all of a sudden your rod just sort of loads up and you just sort of keep reeling and those little tiny needle hooks just get into the fish's mouth. And they have a hard time spitting them. You don't really have to do the macho hooks that you would with like a, you know, a large mouth rod or a bait cast rod when you're, you know, flipping or pitching or any of that stuff. It's just very subtle. So that winch spinning rod is, it's awesome. I, uh, I love that rod. Um, and uh, I use a, you know, even a, win uh, not a winch, but a Veritas rod, um, a seven foot medium heavy action for buzz bait fishing too, because I like the way they load up, um, you know, where you want the rod to first load up with the fish. And so when you set the hook, it's just, it's the fish is already basically on and hooked. You're just sort of tightening up with it. It's it's pretty cool, but yeah, that 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 white rod's pretty pretty sweet. Veritas winch. I'm, so good. I'm glad Darren's uh, watching. That's good. Yeah, he's he's actually paying attention. So yeah, good. Um, next question: uh, What's the best approach for taking to take fishing Main Duck Island? A lot of water around the island. From Michael Yoshida. Ooh, Main Duck. Oh, I hate this. Fly. Everybody's favorite. That is my favorite place in the world. As crazy as it sounds, and and uh, I love it out there. You know, um, you know, before he, uh, uh, he had cancer, before he knew he had cancer, Gord Downey from Tragically Hip, right? So um, I'm downtown Toronto, and it's an after party after this big fundraiser uh, for Swim Drink Fish uh, uh, deal for Lake Ontario. Uh, Gord and I and, and my wife Sandy, we talked for about 45 minutes. This is about a year before, um, you know, uh, we found out he had cancer. And we, we met, we were introduced to that part. We talked for about 45 minutes about, about fishing and life in general. And we both talked about Maine Duck Island. And he talked about it because he's a Kingston guy, right? And, and that, and I talk about it, you know, talked about it because I love fishing out there. And, and uh, I never did get a chance to, he said, come on down to the studio because I, I asked him if his studio was near one of the places where I launched my boat. And he said, oh, yeah, that's where it is. He says, are you down there often? I said, I launched there a couple of times a year. And he said, well, I'll be down there for like, I don't know, May and June or whatever, like for like three months period doing some recording. And then uh, he says, stop in. I never did get a chance to stop in. And uh, and then, you know, about a year and a half later, he's gone. But uh, that was both our favorite spots. We both talked about how we loved it out there. Um Last year wasn't that good out of Maine Duck, though. I don't know why. The water temperatures were cold on Lake Ontario, and uh, the fish didn't seem to come out there very, very good. Um, but uh, it was, you know, on fire the year before. Um, it there. If I had to pick one lure for deep water out there, it'd be that Berkeley Gulp Fry on a drop shot on a half ounce uh, ultra tungsten weight um, with a Fusion 19 size one drop shot hook which you probably got those drop shot hooks in stock i'm sure ben um and uh and just yeah half ounce uh you know tungsten weight and and uh ooh, i i use 10 uh eight is good too trialing fluorocarbon line um it's funny because drop shotting i'm using either all fluorocarbon all 10 or eight pound test on my spinning outfit or I'm using, um, you know, like a, a thin braid or a nano fill um, in in 10 pound test, and then a fluorocarbon leader. And uh, if I do go to a leader, I use a very small black inline swivel, a, a size 10, um, in between my main line and my fluorocarbon leader to prevent line twist. And uh, just don't want to reel it up too tight and reel it through your tip top and your guides just to, you know, leave it, leave it off the tip uh, so you don't wreck your, uh, your tip tops on your rods. But that prevents line twist. Um, that Berkeley spy works out there. There's been times where it's just been epic when the fish are shallow. Um, 
I don't want to give away too much here tonight, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty special place when it's on. I just, you know, it's funny because when you get out there, um, people that know me well know that I pack a lot of food in the boat, right? So I carry like at least three types of cold cuts. Um, nice. <laughs> you know, he's uh, uh, that dub liner is pretty good. Uh, carry gold dub liner. It's an Irish cheese, I believe. Uh, uh, pickles, uh, you know, some nice buns or wraps, uh, mayo, you know, uh, Dijon mustard and lettuce. And I, I mean, I like to eat well when I'm in the boat and I'm, I'm at that COVID weight right now. Uh, <laughs> eight pounds on. Darren lost 25. My son lost 25 pounds so during It's because you're not fishing together. He's not getting the good eats. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Or, or something. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, I pull into the main duck in the back. There's a little cut where the sailboaters and pleasure boaters go in there and I, and I'll tie up in there and, or I'll go in that bay if it's a west wind and just anchor with the power pole somewhere along the, uh, near the shore. And I've had so many wonderful lunches out there over the years. And I, to me, I cherish that being out there um, on a beautiful day, having lunch and, and catchy fish too. But I mean, I fish so I, you know, I fish so much that it's, as crazy as it is, it's almost secondary, um, even though I'm a fanatic about fishing, it's secondary to all those other things in life, like, you know, being around great people and fun people and stuff uh, that I get to meet. And then having, you know, nice meals in nice places. Well, we got, we've got one more question. I know you've got lots on the go tomorrow. So we, you know, we were aiming to wrap it up at eight, but Ellen Jason, he asked, what's your go-to setup or bait when you're having a really tough day on the water uh for bass if, if for large both yeah well we'll go both but but if it's and like i fish a lot of tournaments still and that's what i love to do as i mentioned at the start of the show um there's certain rods i always have in the boat when i'm bass fishing and let's say we're at Bay Quinney, let's say we're on Big Rito Lake, let's say we're at, you know, uh, Dog and Cranberry or or maybe uh, uh, Newboro or a- any lake. Um, uh, could be Mitchell's Bay or Lake St. Clair or, or Simcoe. And I'm fishing large boats, small boats. So I've got, you know, a lot of rods in the boat, but there's a handful of rods I always, always have rigged. Um, if I had to pick one thing to do the rest of my life, bass fishing, and I couldn't do anything else, it would be flip and pitch for largemouth. I like largemouth fishing. That's just, it's my favorite. Smallmouth fishing is wonderful here in the province of Ontario. We've got the best lakes, probably some of the best lakes in the world here for smallmouth. And, uh, but I, I fish so many of them and so many tournaments now are smallmouth driven, although I know down in your neck of the woods, Ben, the Quinney series is is a lot of largemouth fishing, which is fun. That's why I like fishing down there. Um, it would be uh, a flipping rod, and uh, I don't have one really close, but it would be um, either uh, a 7.6 or a 7.8 Vrosity, or, or another one that I tend to use a lot, and it's the Fenwick world-class uh rod those two are my favorite flipping rods and i never ever ever go bass fishing without some flipping rods in the boat for large boat because if it's hot and muggy they'll still be bass in heavy cover and i can flip and pitch them and what i'll use for those is um is a crazy legs chigger uh, craw uh, berkeley power bait chigger craw black blue is I probably have a hundred packs of those things, um, you know, at the house. And then I keep some in the truck and I keep some in the boat. And at tournaments, I always have spares in the truck just in case I run out. But black and blue uh, chigger craw uh, rigged on either. It could be a half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce tungsten weight, uh, 65 pound uh, spider wire uh, braid. And, and uh, you know, down the road, I'll be using more of the uh, the X5 uh, for flipping as well. Uh, but, but you know, braid, heavy rod, seven, six, seven foot, eight inch rod, flipping heavy cover. 
I love to do it. So that'd be for largemouth. So that's a must have for me. Then for smallmouth, I'd say that Berkeley General would be would be number one on the list for sure of, of wacky rigged um, or Texas rigged, you know, depending smallmouth, largemouth, weeds, no weeds, open water, shallow water, deep water. Sometimes what I do on the wacky rig, which is interesting, and I don't have one beside me now, but is I'll take a 16th ounce uh, tungsten weight or even an 8th ounce bullet tungsten weight and put it on my line and I'll wacky rig the bait right in the center. I'll hook it with a wacky hook with that little sinker sliding up and down my line. And sometimes if there's a bit of wind, a bit of current, a bit of depth, maybe deeper than say three or four feet, I can fish that bait a little more quicker and efficiently by covering more water. Cause you know, you want that bait to slowly fall down, but with that little weight, it falls a little faster down and you can just cover the water more. So I'll, I'll carry some of those either in black or green pumpkin and yep. you know just to have those but i don't know there's so many lures i i just i've got so many baits around me another bait that if, if you don't have these in your bass fisherman something's wrong this is this is uh i don't know there's a, a number of sizes that these power swimmers come in yep. uh, the berkeley power swimmer that bait is crazy good you can like I these I ordered uh, this winter for smallmouth fishing because I'm going to use them on the little Berkeley uh, swim jig hook, and uh, I happen to have one rigged right here, and there is there is just a finessey little eight ounce jig head that Berkeley makes, and it's such a cool looking jig head, and then you've got uh, you've got that little small i believe that one's a, a 2.8 inch uh, power swimmer that is that's like a that's sort of like a hoover vacuum cleaner when you throw it out there everything will eat a bait like that you can get a six pound smallmouth will eat a small little you know presentation like that or you can get a perch i'll eat it or or uh, you know walleye i'll eat it and that's one thing i like about swim baits from a a category of lures you know, whether I'm using a bigger power swimmer, say in a 4.8 inch for largemouth on weed flats down in, uh, you know, in Big Bay and in, uh, in um, uh, Bay Quinney. I mean, I might use that with a, a belly weighted Fusion 19 hook um, yep. casting over weed flats, you know, and then I go to that ultra light, not ultra light, but that lightweight one for smallmouth, you know, in clear water. Yeah. Uh, do you have a lot of swim baits down there at the store? loaded and those power swimmers we had them in both sides it's we're just fully stocked we we're pretty excited for that one i mean you put that up even against the kytex and i don't yeah but i think that Berkeley's power bait that power they swim, eat it right yeah like if they if they they hit it and they taste it for some reason they don't want to spit it you know and i, I actually I, I was down in spirit lake iowa filming about 15 years ago and power bait's been out for a long time. I, mean, I remember using it 25 years ago. I, I remember using it winning tournaments with my brother Wayne, team tournaments, some of the OV Pro Bass, GM Pro Bass tournaments using the old Berkeley uh, sand worms and different baits, the power worms and that. And uh, so we're in Spirit Lake, Iowa, and they've got all these tanks down there with bass in them, right? And they'll take a piece of traditional plastic from like a zoom or you know all the different baits out there that are just pure plastic right made out of plastisol i believe it is they'll throw that into the tank and the fish comes over and eats and we were videotaping this years ago for the show when we got to get into their uh where they research all these lures and the bass would come and they'd eat this plastisol and they'd spit it out within a second or so They'd throw a piece of power bait, and they didn't have gulp back then when we when did the tour, but they'd throw a piece of plastic, uh, uh, not plastic, but of power bait in, throw it in the tank, it'd sink down, bass would come over the same, the same sort of way it would come over to the regular plastic. It'd suck it in, and we'd be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and they wouldn't spit out the uh, power bait. Like, we'd wait there for, like, a couple minutes. They wouldn't spit it out. So you know what that told me way back then is 
how much longer it gives you to set the hook when you feel that doink or that tick or whatever the hit is, you know, whether it's an aggressive hit or a, a light hit or, a, you know, a, a fish that just wallops it, wallops it. It, is, it gives you a lot of time, you know, and then, you're, you know, the max, uh, max scent that you're holding, it's even, it's even uh, more so, you know, it's moist and smells and, and the fish eat those things. I don't know what's in it, as I said earlier, but they what? just eat it. What got me is when they came out, when, when a company like Berkeley makes a statement like catches 45% more fish and they put that on their packaging. I mean, if it's not true and they don't have scientific data to back that up, they're opening themselves up to a lawsuit. So you know that that's true. And I remember being in a sales meeting and hearing your first general story about when you got the general max scent. Um, I think you were out on Lake Erie or was pre-fishing for one of the B1s, but did you have an interesting day with that? Oh, it, it, it was crazy. Uh, the problem, and this is a good problem to have, but when you're practicing for tournaments, you don't like to hook a lot of fish. I mean, if you're, you know, if you hook like a five or six pound bass and, you know, you bring it in the boat and hold it up, really, it'll bite a game, but it might not bite the next day or two days later when the tournament is right it might it might you know shy away from lures maybe for a day or two but the problem is with with power bait or max scent when you're practicing it's hard to shake fish off and a lot of times what i'll do is i'll bend the hook down whether i'm flipping um in heavy cover for large months or fishing like in open water with a general or or a power tube or something i'll bend the hook down because a lot of times they're holding on long enough you can kind of pull back and do this tug and war with them and find out, eh, it's got some weight to it, you know, and you might hook the first fish or two. But after that, as you're casting out blind casting, say long cast in shallow water or um, deep water, you might just sort of feel them out, you know. And, you know, I, I've had tournaments before where I felled out 50 fish flipping, for instance, and not set the hook on one. And then in the tournament, gone to those exact same areas and got hits in every spot that I felt one ticket away, but he couldn't get hooked because the hook was bent under or cut off, right? But they're, you know, trying to eat this lure and you finally pull it out of their mouth. So they, the fish do want to eat those things. And that's, you know, better for whether you're a tournament angler or a person that just likes to fun fish and catch fish. You got to love that. I mean, there's such an advantage to them. And I'm surprised, you know, um, uh, why you'd even want to use just a regular plastic, soft plastic lure, for instance, that doesn't have some of these attributes baked or cooked or mixed into it, whatever they're putting in it. Because uh, I look at fishing as this, it's all a game of percentages, Ben. If it's 1%, 2%, 10% in your favor, you know, why not use it? And it's like braided line is going to give you better hook sets, better sensitivity. Um, you know, will rip through weeds better. Why not use it? Um, if uh, if a bait's going to hold on better, um, you know, a fish going to hold on better to a, a soft bait, why not use it? And I, I look at it all as, I guess because I'm a, a competitive fisherman, you know, and I, I, I like fishing tournaments where it's a long drive home if you don't win anything. But uh I got to get myself in shape for this year's tournament. So I'm going to have to shed about 10 pounds real quick. <laughs> and everybody knows me well say 10. What's he talking about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 15, 20. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So we've crested that eight o'clock and I know you've got uh, a busy day tomorrow. Um, we talked about giving one more thing away and we didn't really talk about the question and, and you made reference to something at the beginning. I think it was a trophy and I think it looked actually Lo and behold, something like this. Uh, the names on it is Bob Azumi and Derek Strube. And, oh, there's two years that you guys won it. So, yeah, well, hey, hey, we only fished it twice, so there you go. Well, undefeated. So <laughs> I happened to be staring at the trophy, and I thought, what better question than to ask than to put out there and see um, maybe whoever can guess what years you guys won that thing could take away a brand new Abu Garcia Verasi rod. What do you think? Well, you got a $200 rod. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. I'm glad you're asking, you know, the people because, uh, and you're going to tell me the dates because I can't remember. 
Hey, I it's been so long since I won a tournament. You know, I mean, I it's been so long. I think I had hair last time I won one. But here's the irony about that. Okay, is is I don't know how many people in Canada can say this, which is really weird. But it's too bad I couldn't do a tour. But I'm not into to to show and off stuff too much like that. But up in the in the far end of the house in the loft there are piles of trophies just in in a dark corner and in medals and stuff of of i don't know maybe 80 or 100 tournaments that i've won right but i've won tournaments believe it or not in the 70s 80s 90s 2000s but now that we've hit 2020 20 i got to win some in this decade so that it'll go from the 70s 80s 90s uh, 2000 so that'll be five decades or whatever or six decades i don't know how i'll dad it up Matt, uh, grade seven was the best four years of my life uh through <laughs> that i'm going fishing so anyway but yeah so so it's funny i gotta start winning again it's been it's been probably about five six years i haven't won a tournament i mean last year our two best finishes were i think we got a third at uh, the trenton uh flw canada cup and uh, then we got a, a good finish at one of the Renegade tournaments in Cornwall, had like twenty some odd pounds. But but yeah, you know. I was I was in that FLW last year, and I watched you wing by me and catch all the fish and you know, parade right. under a third place finish. That was great. <laughs> yeah, but we were scraping. We were trying to get them here, there, and all over. After talking to uh, Cal Clemson and Les Acne, and and I saw where they caught some of their fish, some of them big smallmouth, and that I thought to myself, you know what? Sometimes less is good. In my case, we were catching numbers, but but they caught like I think they had a few days where they only caught like five fish each day, but they were had like monster weights. They had I think three smallmouth, two largemouth every day in that tournament, something like that, and and they were monsters. Uh, hey, uh, you know, congratulations to them. But uh, it's it's tough. I like numbers, and I like going through numbers of fishing tournaments, but that doesn't always win. They went yep. for big fish only. And they had some sort of magic spot where they'd catch largemouth on like a drop shot or, or whatever around some weed and rocks and stuff every day. And then they'd go for smallmouth and they'd catch like three big smallmouth. And that was their day every day. It was, it was crazy. I mean, who can catch five fish uh, in a tournament? And that's all you catch all day and you win it. You know, that's a, that's fishing. That's fishing for big fish, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, we have we we figured it out. Pam Isaac got it. It was two thousand seven and two thousand eight. Oh, I wonder. I wonder how Pam knew that. I wonder if she has Google because <laughs> <laughs> she knows more than I know. I'd have to go look back. In fact, I don't know. I I, I really don't know. I'd have to go look in uh, in my uh, my uh, trophy uh, corner there and see. <laughs> nice. There it is. I'd like to get my name back on that before I die. It'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the irony, I will, will speak about that, Ben. You know, it's funny because in tournament fishing or just fishing in general, it's hard to repeat history in where you catch fish. And if I can leave uh, the, the people on Facebook with this tonight is, is that don't get too set in your ways. And, and I'm telling you because... I am set my ways sometimes, and that hurts me when I go filming shows or fishing tournaments. And some of the bad days I have on the water is when I have too much of a preconceived idea of what the fish are doing and where we're going to catch them. Like, for instance, this week, Stroob and I had our best action for those swim bait walleye on a spot we'd never been to, and he's fished all of his adult life, and I fished all of my adult life on Lake St. Clair. And we went to an area both of us had never fished, just idling around, idling around, and all of a sudden, wow, look at this cabbage weed here in a bit of a depression. And, and that's where all the fish were, at least a good swim bait, walleyes, and there was pike in there and all kinds of stuff. Um, but in those two Quinny Series tournaments, the one year we fished, um, the let's see now, we caught a lot of our fish in a spot we didn't think we had a chance of winning that was uh, just a break in about uh, 18 to 24 feet of water. Um, and that's where we caught all of the fish the first year we won it. 
The next year, we were within a pound of that same weight. I think we had like 25 pounds the first day and 20 pounds the second day, give or take. And it was like about 45 pounds uh, per tournament, two years in a row. The next time we ran quite a distance and we got them in the St. Lawrence River in the current the first day, we had 25 pounds. Wow. And then the second day we we fished the main lake and had 20 or 21 pounds on the main lake running around because the current fish, the second day we went to the current fish in the river and we were fishing like uh, 28 to uh, 42 feet of water in the river. We can get a bite. I don't think we got one fish in the river the second morning. And before panicking, after about two, three hours of no fish, we said, we got to we gotta salvage the day. Went out on the lake and started to catch and catching them uh, in, in about 30 feet of water and uh, got a few here and a few there and put together a 20 or 21 pound limit. So both years were one in completely different areas of, of the lake in areas that uh, we hadn't won tournaments before. And it's hard to repeat history and the lakes and rivers do not always fish the same year to year. Like we're talking about Maine Duck Island last year, it might have got better later in the season, but I'll tell you that first couple of weeks of the season or first month of the season, it wasn't good. The water temperatures were cold and fish just weren't out there very good compared to other years. And so, you know, that's when you got to change it up. And uh, and at that Thousand Islands Open tournament last year, you know, I made a mistake and didn't fish the river as much as I should have and was stubborn fishing out on the lake. And I didn't even make the top 50 cut after having four years of top 10s in a row at that tournament on the Thousand Islands Open, we were like, I don't know, 55th or 65th place and didn't make the top half of the cut to fish the third day. So, you know, that's being stubborn. And my new rule, and I hope Darren's listening, is is I will listen to him more and not be <laughs> stubborn and set in my ways if it's a team tournament. Oh, I better write that down. I might forget. <laughs> anyway. It's live. It's on record now, Bob. It's okay. <laughs> it's on record. Well, Ben, I uh, I, I want to ask you one question about uh, about your online uh, business. Yep. If I ordered something tonight, okay, so I live in Ontario. I'm outside of Milton, right? Yep. How long would it take to get to me? So we're gonna, we're going to do a little plug time and. I, the yeah, but the question, I'm serious about that because as a tournament angler, there's sometimes I need things, right? And I might be at a hotel for like two or three nights before the tournament. So let's yep. say Wednesday I get on a hot bite and uh, I need, uh, you know, some uh, five inch generals in, um, you know, in, in one of the colors like a green pumpkin or something. If I ordered them Wednesday, how long would it take to get to the hotel? Next day. So if you what? order it, if you order it Wednesday, if it's in before three o'clock, we'll get it out of here. And sure. if, let's say you order tonight with all the promos that are going on, we'll get that shipped tomorrow. And our promise is if it doesn't ship tomorrow, you'll have a phone call from a real live person and we're gonna call and we're gonna we're gonna offer substitutes or we're gonna explain to you what happened and let you know when it's available. But there's no email, there's no you'll get emails, but you're gonna get a real life person call and say, Bob, I know you want five inch in, in black blue. Do you need black if we don't have it, if there's something that happened? But right. for the most part, we get it out next day. And if it, you're in Ontario, you know, in a, a Maine, Ontario, uh, if you're in Quebec, most of the time, it's just, it's next day. It's really that fast. It's been great. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Well, I guess you're going to have my uh, card on file then, my Visa card. <laughs> Is I'm a bit of a tackle junkie and, and there are times that I run out on location and that I, I start to panic, you know, and it's not good when you're panicking at my age and, and you go, oh, the tournament starts in two days and I got like one pack of this left and what are we going to do? And uh, that's good to know. That's, that's pretty cool service. And so you're carrying some pretty good inventory and yep. uh, that's that's awesome. Well, you know what? That's that's pretty commendable. And and in this day and age of uh, you know going through COVID nineteen, the pandemic, and and that um, the fact that oh, what about shipping too? Is there any deals on shipping? I just this question because I know the U.S. sites. Yeah. You know, you you order so much, you don't pay shipping. Is what do you got on that? 
and for the most of the time, we're constantly running a uh, hundred dollars or more free freight. Uh, oh, there's wow. there's some exceptions to the trolling motors and stuff like that, but right. um, and t we turn it on for tonight. So a little promo for the next week, we're going to run free freight over a hundred. Um, some other popular things we had are mystery boxes. Uh, believe it or not, we're doing a Canadian mystery box. Okay. And for Father's Day, maybe Darren wants to to listen up and, and tune in. Uh, we've got a thirty, a fifty, and a seventy dollar box. We load this with uh, with product, and it's double or triple the value. So if you're buying a thirty dollar box, I'm giving you sixty dollars or more worth of baits, and and it's a really good mixture, and and that's been super popular lately. So. So I know that yourself and some of your crew there are, are you know, hardcore anglers, your outdoors guys. So you're going to put some pretty cool stuff in there for for those boxes, eh? Yeah, we've seen, uh, there's been a pile of Berkeley that goes into them. Um, I mean, there's been everything from chatter baits to spinner baits to tons of soft plastics. Um, there's been spy cool. baits. It, it is nothing, nothing better than opening up a package that's got an assortment of lures. And as you pick them out, you go, wow, oh, this is awesome. This is cool. I, I, I think that's a, a really cool concept. Uh, just what I need to some more lures. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. A man can never have, or a woman can never have enough lures. True story. So, Although, in, in this case, since we're wrapping up, maybe some chicken wings and pizza, too, which is, is what I'm going to go have over there in a few minutes. <laughs> Well, we we want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank you. We want to thank Berkeley. We want to thank everybody for getting your time and, and all your expertise tonight. It means a lot to us. Uh, we're glad that everybody's safe in your household. Everybody's happy, and you're getting lots of fishing in. So, thank well, you. Well, so you know, Ben, I, I hope to see you at one of the tournaments this year. I know a lot of them are canceled, but I hope to see you at one of them this year or or more. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for having me on the show tonight. I know this is the first Facebook Live that you folks have done. And yep. um, I also want to thank the folks at Pure Fishing. And uh, we don't use the word pure fishing too much because it is a lot of different brands. But, you know, Abu Garcia and Berkeley and Fenwick and Fluger and all those great brands that are under that umbrella. I want to thank them for, uh, um, you know, let me know about your website. Let me know about uh, this Facebook Live and, and joining you. And uh, until then, I'm getting ready. I think I got to go fishing this week again. I It was so weird. It felt like getting out of jail free, getting out on the water. I mean, I've literally fished three days during this whole pandemic. And so um, that's it. Sorry. Hey, Bob. Uh, yeah. Corey from Pure Fishing just chimed in. He must like what we're saying because he said, uh, hey, Ben, we will give a free fusion hook sample pack to the first 50 customers that order two or more Berkeley baits. Great show, guys. Wow. So uh, a fusion hook sample pack. To the first the 50 customers that order two or more Berkeley baits. All right. Well, you know what? I, I don't care what I said about Corey earlier on before the show. He's not <laughs> that bad a guy. <laughs> Well, that is great. So, yeah, okay, good stuff. Well, listen, uh, on that note, I will let you go, Ben. Nice talking to you tonight. Thank and, you very much. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, can't wait to see you on the water uh, out in eastern Ontario. Okay, man? Sounds good. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate your time. Take care.